Like, did it affect you? It was, it, it impacted me tremendously. Matter of fact, we had some, uh, some friends over when, uh, to watch the first episode. And I'm telling you, once that scene aired and my, t- my, uh, Instagram just started just loading up, you're a piece of shit. You're da, 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 da. she should leave you. And like, it started going crazy. I was there just sitting like, Oh my God, people hate me. And so it was, it was something I had to get used to. And so I questioned, should I turn my comments off? And I ended up leaving it on. I talked to uh, my counselor also. She's like, Ralph, a lot of people need to go and get the trauma off their chest because people are looking at abandonment because that's what I did for a lot of people. It was like Ralph abandoned his wife and I had abandonment in my life and that's what I'm experiencing. And now this is a trigger telling me about what this looks like. I hate him, you know, and I hate him because it also happened to me. So allowing people to get that off their chest and just go crazy and type and, you know, and they were able to go and release. So I had to go through it even for myself, just like you did, which was great. How do you go and process this negative negativity so that you can actually get used to it and become immune to where if you see a negative comment, you're like, okay, this is going to just roll off of me. It took a second. Let me tell you this. I'm not 100% 100% immune yet. There are certain things that might possibly penetrate me, but I'm a million times better now. If somebody says something negative, I'm just like, ah, okay, <laughs> whatever, whatever. That's not bad after just one season. It's, it's, a, it's an adjustment. And then of course, if it gets too crazy, I got that old good old block button, you know? Block. <laughs> that block button is, I mean, I don't know what people are thinking. You're like, I can just block you now. And right. I mean, we can keep doing this. You can create fake accounts all day. I could just keep blocking them. I, I don't get right, it. Right, right. What about, were you ever worried that like when you said like all these people were like, I hate you, I hate you. Were you ever worried that like that was going to spill over into your like day job of going into all these companies? And especially now that, you know, people are going back to work, like, you know, because people recognize you, like you said, do you ever worry about that? I mean, I assume that hasn't really spilled over. I mean, one thing has nothing to do with the other. Or has it? Yeah, well, you know, I think you know, I have a public image, right? And also I represent these large enterprises as well. And so I'm always the face. I think when it comes down to it, you always have to carry yourself with a certain conduct. Uh, yes, I definitely thought about it and thought about the impact. But at the same time, these are personal things. It wasn't nothing that, you know, damaged the integrity of any organization that I'm maybe affiliated with these are personal issues that people go through and majority of people actually happen. It just so happens behind closed doors. Mine just happens to be public and open to the world to see. So I even get, uh, especially from an executive perspective, I'm just like a lot of uh, executives, not all, but I'm a, like a, I'm a, li- a lot like a lot of them. We're all type A, we are all very uh, you know, detailed, but we all have our breaking points where we need to get away at some point with the world closing down where is your outlet? A lot of executives travel. And so they can always, okay, you know what? I got a business trip. I'm gonna go here. That gives me a chance to just clear my mind, get my thoughts together and really be able to process where I need to be, get back to my healthiest and my best self. During a pandemic, everyone was basically in a box. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run. You can't go to Starbucks and sit down for a coffee. There's nothing you can do. So anything, you just gotta take it. So look, at the end of the day, this is where we are. What about now? I mean, I'm not judging you because I don't judge anyone, but <laughs> right. I'm just, okay. No, here's the only <laughs> thing I'm saying is, did, well, did you listen, you, you had receipts. So we don't, I mean, you had all your receipts. There was phone calls. And so it's, I'm not judging at all, but I'm just saying, even with his receipts, did it ever cross your mind that the optics of Tampa, Florida being the stripper capital of the world, which I don't know if you knew. I know Andy Cohn pointed it out. I knew that. Couldn't you have gone to Miami? Couldn't you have gone like to Sarasota, Florida? So many places in Florida. Yeah, but all of those take a, you got to, it requires a plane during a pandemic. So, I mean, it's the, I think it probably was that. So you're right. A couple of things. One is like I'm a very analytical person, so I thought about different things, and so even some of my well thought out ideas probably didn't turn out as well. Right, Miami, definitely the place to go. I would have went there in a heartbeat, but I had to get on a plane because there's no way in hell I'm driving down there. I had to look at things that actually made sense for me to go. They're like, why didn't you go to a beach in Georgia? I'm like, 
who the hell wants to go to a beach in Georgia? Like, you know, I'm going to go to Florida. Florida is the place you're going to go if you're going to go to any kind of a beach. And so that's what I ended up doing. I didn't know if Tampa was the, uh, the, the stripper capital of the world. And I don't know if the reality is, is that those strip clubs, I don't know if they appeal to me as much anyway. You know, I have a certain type of a club that I'm going to go to if I'm going to go to a strip club. So really, and the best ones are in Miami. And in Atlanta, these are the these are the strip. The, the, uh, this is a strip club capital to me, as well as on the East Coast. New York strip clubs are phenomenal. If I'm gonna go to a strip club, though, that's where I'm gonna go. You like your strip? Like, what type of strip club do you like? A little more upscale? I, I can, but I mean, it's a, it, it all it all kind of depends on the music that they're playing. You know, something I can. Uh, the, the quality of woman that they have there. You know, it's, it's certain things, and it's a certain dynamic and a vibe that you get from various different strip clubs. So it's just not, you just don't go to just anything. I'm not gonna go to a hole in a wall. If I'm gonna go to something, it's gonna be something nice.